Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, I want to show you how to make an easy do-it-yourself bush pot. Stay tuned. Why make your own bush pot? Well, you can buy them, of course, and there's some fantastic options out there. Zebra makes some great ones. Uh, of course, there's the Morris Kohansky uh, bush pot. And that's a great option. Uh, the Solo Stove bush pot, I have that one, and it's a good bush pot. There's all kinds of things you can buy, and, and they do great. And I highly recommend you just go that route if you don't want to make one. But for everybody who likes to make stuff and do something on the side uh, just uh, for the fun of it and also the enjoyment of using something that you've made yourself, this video is for all of you. So to make this bush pot, you're going to need a few simple tools. Right here I have a wire coat hanger, a hammer, there is a, my pair of multi-tool pliers. Uh, I'm going to need a paper clip, a nail, a board, uh, or something to hammer on. I have a safety can opener and then I have a can of refried beans and it's 31 ounces. It's the closest I could find to 32 ounces for a quart, but it'll work. And then also two stainless steel four to five inch hose clamps. Now the first thing you want to do is open the can and empty the contents. Of course, refried beans are, are great and you can eat them. Very tasty. But you want to make sure you use a safety can opener. This is just a Farberware can opener. But what you don't want is you don't want any sharp edges. So we're going to use this and we're going to start uh, taking this top off. And then we'll show you what, that's look like, what that looks like when we get done with it. And we'll get back to you. Okay, so now that we have that done, we have a, a nice tight fitting lid. And uh, it fits perfectly, of course. And what a safety can opener does is it actually splits this ring around the outside instead of cutting inside here and making a jagged cut. So this is what we want. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we're going to take the lid and the nail. I'm going to find the approximate center. This doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, just somewhere close. And we're going to put a simple hole in it, just like that. And uh, if you wish, you can take and flatten that down so it doesn't have so many sharp edges. But anyway, what you're looking for is that hole. Next, we're going to take the paper clip and we're going to open it up. And what we want to do is we want to form a large loop out of the paper clip. Something like this. So just a large loop. And then we're going to take this and we're going to twist it. Okay, so we have something on the order of this. Like so. And then we're going to cut this end off using the wire cutters. Again, not a very difficult thing. And so we end up with something that looks like this. Now, straighten these back, back out. We're going to feed this down through the hole. Very carefully. All right, there we go. And then once we get to the other side, we're just going to open these ears up, these two little tabs just like that okay now we have a handle for lifting our lid next we're going to take our wire hanger and we're going to clip it on either side of the hook so right here and then over on this other side just exactly opposite all right we don't need this part right now but you could hang on to this this is a great hook you could use this for a lot of things so uh Again, we don't want to throw anything around, away in survival that we might be able to actually use. And we're left with this part of the hanger. So what you want to do is take and straighten this out. And you can either use pliers or if you have good finger strength, you can go ahead and just bend this out. Try to get all the kinks and bends out of it and try to make as straight a piece of wire as you can. And the more you bend and you work with this, the softer and easier it's going to bend for you. Now that you have your wire partly straightened out, take the pliers and we go to the end and we're going to put a small bend in it just small you don't need a real big bend just a small hook like that okay we're going to lay that down and we're going to take the can and the nail 
and we're gonna go down inside the can. Now we do not want this too close to the outside. Now you could hammer it in from the top, but you're gonna bend the can and the lid's not gonna fit. So you have to nail it from the inside and I would advise you to stay away from this solder line that's on the inside. So I like to go to either side of it. That seems to work a little bit better. So we're gonna find a, a good spot and we wanna be down, oh, about three quarters of an inch to an inch. Just a little bit above that first rib. And it's very simple. Put a hole in it with the nail. The nail sticking out, we go ahead and push it through. Wiggle it around a little bit, like this. And we do the same thing to the other side. I'll get back with you. Now that we have the holes put through there, you can see we have one here and one here. Problem is we have some jagged edges sticking out. So we're just gonna take the pliers and we're gonna crimp those down. It's a very simple process, but it just flattens down those sharp edges where we poke the nail through and just, just grip it a few times across through there and that'll make it smooth enough that you're not gonna catch your fingers on it while you're working with it and also smooths it down for our project. It's a very simple thing to do, very easy, just to fold that over. Now, we take the hook that we made with our wire and we're going to insert it in the can. And you might have to fiddle with this a little bit to get this to fit. Sometimes if your curve on your hook is a little too severe, you may have to bend it out just a little bit to get the right angle so that it fits in the can. And there we go. All right. And once we get that, we can go back in here and we can bend that over uh, and flatten that out just a little bit more. So that's actually quite easy to do. We can just poke it through the can like this and then make that a little better of a bend. So that looks something like, something like that. All right, and now we have this in our can. Next step. Now we want to go above this flat spot just a little bit with the thumb and we're gonna put a bend in, a 90 degree bend, like that. So it's straight up and down and we're bent this way. Then holding that, we use the curve of the can to go on around the outside, just like this. Okay, so we have a hook here and the hole comes down roughly a 90 degree angle and you're gonna have to play with this a little bit. To come on around until we are opposite now where the other hole is. At this point, we want to, using some thumb pressure here, we want to put another 90 degree bend in it, but this time we're bending it up. Just like that. Now, you can take this curve here and you can play with it a little bit and get that bent in a little bit better so that it fits around the can a little a little more securely so it doesn't stick out strange and you can always tweak it later all right the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take i'm going to cut this off here and create another hook to go inside of this hole on this side using the wire cutters we don't need a whole lot of wire we just need enough for a little hook so we're going to cut it off about right there i'll pick that up here and when i'm done and you can kind of see what we have so far but we need a hook on this side to go in. Now, I would recommend when you do this that you start with a very small hook and you don't want to go all the way with it just a little bit past 90 so that it will fit in that hole. And that's kind of what we're looking for right there. Now you can go ahead and, and feed this on through like we did the other side, if you wish, and then bend it on over so that it makes a nice hook like that and now when we pull it back down we have a nice secure hook and this forms the bail handle for our improvised bush pot and it really is that simple all right now we're gonna, we got one other further part we're gonna put on this we're gonna make some butterfly handles now we take our remainder of the wire that we used that we clipped off there and we're going to go ahead and straighten it out. And again, this takes a little bit of finger strength, but if you need, you can use your pliers. And you don't have to use a multi-tool for this. You can use a pair of wire clippers and a regular pair of pliers. 
but I happen to carry this with me all the time and I've used it quite a bit for these type of projects. So now we have a nice straight piece of wire, relatively straight, it's got a couple of little tiny bends in it, but it's good enough for what we're going to use it for. Alright, next we need to put some bends in this. And the way we do that is we just start by putting a bend here, like this. And what we're doing is we're making, we're making ears, we're making handles uh, to go on here for butterfly handles. I'll get that made and I'll get right back with you. So what you're going to end up with is something that looks like this. And it's big enough for three fingers, three of my fingers, four if you kind of squeeze them in there a little bit. You don't want this too big. Uh, or it will interfere with the function of your pot. It needs to be big enough that you can keep your hands away from the heat on this side of the can and the bush pot you're making, but not so big that it causes an issue. So I'm going to make two of these, and then I'll show you how we're going to put them on. Now that we have our two handles made, and you want to do your best to try to keep them square so that they are relatively the same size and shape. Uh, it's going to be a little difficult with wire. You'll have to play with it a little bit, but you want them to be relatively the same uh, angles and bends and all of that. And you also want to make sure that it's not too long. As you can see up next to the can, it has a certain uh, length here. We don't want it real long and sticking out. It has to be smaller than the can by just a little bit. And you get a kind of idea what that's like. The next thing we're going to do is we take our hose clamps and we slide them on here and this can take a little bit of fiddling but what we're going to do is we're going to use these inside the can. And I'll get back and I'll fasten that on uh, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay now that we've got these tightened on here and we've got our handles inserted as you can see we've bent them a little bit to fit the curvature but now we have a really nice pair of folding butterfly handles along with our bush pot fold them in, fold this back down, makes a fairly compact package. If we need to pour, we can always hold it like this, using this. And it's a great idea for being able to handle it when it's hot. Because this has a curve in it at the top, whenever you put it on a stick over the fire, it's going to tend to center itself and hang over the fire like it should. And then of course, we have our lid. Fits right on top, on and off, fits the can perfectly because it came off of the can. And we have our billy pot, or a bush pot, if you wish to call it that. And one other thing that you need to know is you need to put this in a fire and you need to burn this before you start to use it. Now don't get, get it too hot because you don't want to melt the solder in the seams. But inside these cans is a BPA coating, a plastic lining, and you want to burn that out before you use it. Once you do that, your do-it-yourself bush pot is ready to go. And it's 31 ounces or roughly a quart. So, I won't hold quite that much because we put some holes in the sides. But, uh, as you can see, it'll do the job. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure and check out the links in the description box below. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.